Paraquat poisoning. Paraquat intoxication represents a critical medical emergency characterized by its potential for inducing severe multi-organ dysfunction with particular predilection for pulmonary tissue. The pathophysiology involves rapid absorption and distribution throughout the body, culminating in progressive pulmonary fibrosis and ultimately respiratory failure. The time-sensitive nature of paraquat toxicity necessitates immediate clinical intervention as the window for effective treatment narrows rapidly post-exposure. Toxicokinetics the toxicokinetic profile of paraquat is marked by rapid but incomplete gastrointestinal absorption following ingestion. Upon entering the bloodstream, paraquat undergoes extensive distribution to various organs, with preferential accumulation in pulmonary tissue, hepatic parenchyma, renal tissue, and skeletal muscle. The compound exhibits relatively rapid elimination kinetics, with approximately 90% of the absorbed dose being excreted unchanged in the urine within the initial 12 to 24 hours post-exposure. A particular clinical significance is the compound's predilection for pulmonary tissue, where it is actively transported into type 2 pneumocytes, resulting in prolonged local tissue exposure due to markedly delayed pulmonary elimination. Pathophysiology The fundamental mechanism underlying paraquat toxicity centers on its capacity to generate reactive oxygen species. This oxidative stress cascade initiates multiple pathways of cellular injury. These include peroxidation of lipid membranes, compromising cellular integrity, activation of the NF-kappa B pathway, triggering pro-inflammatory cascades, disruption of mitochondrial function, compromising cellular energetics, and initiation of programmed cell death pathways. The cumulative effect of these processes results in progressive tissue damage and organ dysfunction. Clinical classifications. The severity of paraquat poisoning is stratified based on the ingested quantity of paraquat ion per kilogram of body weight. Mild or subacute cases involve ingestion of less than 20 mg per kilogram, often presenting with minimal symptomatology. Moderate to severe cases, resulting from ingestion of 20 to 40 mg per kilogram, manifest with more pronounced clinical features. Fulminant cases involving ingestion exceeding 40 mg per kilogram typically result in rapid clinical deterioration and poor outcomes. Clinical Manifestations The temporal progression of paraquat toxicity typically manifests in two distinct phases. In the early phase, occurring within hours of exposure, patients predominantly exhibit local corrosive effects, including characteristic oral and esophageal ulcerations colloquially termed paraquat tongue, accompanied by prominent gastrointestinal symptomatology, including vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. The late phase evolving over days to weeks, is characterized by progressive multi-organ dysfunction. This includes acute kidney injury, hepatocellular damage, cardiovascular instability manifesting as hypotension and tachycardia, progressive respiratory insufficiency due to evolving pulmonary fibrosis, and neurological sequelae ranging from confusion to seizures and obtundation. Diagnosis the diagnostic approach to suspected paraquat poisoning encompasses both clinical assessment and laboratory evaluation. The cornerstone of diagnosis remains a thorough history focusing on potential exposure or ingestion, coupled with careful physical examination emphasizing oral mucosa inspection, respiratory status evaluation, and hemodynamic assessment. Laboratory evaluation should be comprehensive, including the rapid urine dithionite screening test and, where available, quantitative plasma paraquat concentration measurement. Additional essential laboratory studies include a comprehensive metabolic panel, arterial blood gas analysis, complete blood count, and pancreatic enzyme assessment to evaluate for potential complications. Management principles. Paraquat poisoning management consists of three fundamental principles immediate stabilization and supportive care, gastrointestinal decontamination, and enhanced elimination. 
Initial management prioritizes standard resuscitation protocols while avoiding excess oxygen supplementation due to its potential to exacerbate oxidative injury. Gastrointestinal decontamination utilizing activated charcoal or fuller's earth should be implemented promptly when appropriate. Ongoing care focuses on meticulous fluid management to support renal clearance while avoiding fluid overload, early initiation of nutritional support, and appropriate pain management and sedation as clinically indicated. Specific interventions. Therapeutic options beyond supportive care remain limited and controversial. Extracorporeal elimination via hemodialysis or hemoperfusion may be considered in early presentations, ideally within four hours of ingestion. Immunosuppressive therapy typically combining corticosteroids and cyclophosphamide, has been employed in attempts to mitigate inflammatory pulmonary injury, though with inconsistent results. Antioxidant therapies, including vitamin C and E and N-acetylcysteine, have theoretical benefits but lack robust clinical evidence supporting their efficacy. Prognosis the prognosis in paraquat poisoning is influenced by several key factors, including the quantity ingested, the time interval between exposure and initiation of medical intervention, and plasma paraquat concentration. Long-term complications in survivors typically include pulmonary fibrosis with associated chronic respiratory insufficiency, esophageal strictures secondary to corrosive injury, and potential chronic kidney disease requiring ongoing renal replacement therapy. Prevention. Given the limited therapeutic options and high mortality associated with paraquat poisoning, prevention remains paramount. Comprehensive public education regarding its toxicity, stringent access restrictions, and promotion of safer alternative herbicides constitute the cornerstone of prevention strategies. Take home message. In the absence of a specific antidote, Management of paraquat poisoning remains primarily supportive. Early recognition and rapid intervention are crucial to optimizing outcomes. The cornerstone of care remains supportive management, with careful attention to avoiding iatrogenic complications such as oxygen toxicity. Given the high mortality rate, particularly in cases of significant ingestion, prevention remains the optimal strategy for reducing the burden of paraquat poisoning in clinical practice. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.